Hey guys, what's going on? This is Drewby Doo, and welcome to the next episode of Shadowverse. And today, we'll be talking about the leaders in Shadowverse and their respective class of cards. Uh, each leader, you know, there's seven of them, and each leader has a class that um, has a, you know, a very specific motif or style of play with their cards. Uh, and for those who are new to the game, I encourage you to play through the story mode with with each of the leaders, just so you can get a feel of the, that class and see which one works for you. Also, you get a ton of, uh, just a ton of rewards for completing the story modes with each of the characters. So it's literally just a no drawback uh, play, so to speak. Anywho, let's just get right into it. Let's discuss uh, the first leader, Arisa. And for, for this video, it's going to be a little bit longer than the others, only because I'm not going to just talk about uh, her class, which is Forest Craft. I'm also going to be discussing neutral cards. What neutral cards are, basically cards that can be used within any class, within by all leaders. So you can run them in any deck you want, which is very important, especially for this meta right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go over some real quick that are worth mentioning that are in the meta. And there's like the, you know, just like the big cards that are, like, used within Forest Craft. Uh, let's see. A few stand out is, for example, Fairy Circle. It's, just, it's, it's a beginner card, puts two fairies in your hand. Uh, like I said, this whole deck is about... Well, no, I didn't tell you what this deck is about. This deck is about um, getting as many cards in your hand as possible and then playing as many spells in one turn as possible so you can get off the extra abilities. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Do... Um... Let's see, Actress Feria. She's a very big, she's a big um, player in the meta. Just because of her ability, give plus one plus one to all other neutral followers. That is huge. To get a 4-4 four, four creature that can attack another follower that turn and then buff everyone else that's neutral by plus one plus one. Very, very, very good card. Everyone uses this card. Um... Let's see, Altered Fate, you have to discard a card and basically you get rid of your hand and then you draw a new hand equal to the amount of cards you had before. Uh, it's only used in Dragoncraft. Like, it's used a lot in Dragoncraft. It's like the only reason why I would bother mentioning it. Um, let's see. <sighs> right now, so, whoops. God, oh, this shit's gonna happen again, huh? Rhinoceros, literally the bane of my existence. Storm and fanfare. Storm is when you can attack anyone, including the opponent, directly. And his ability is it gets plus for each other card played this turn, gain plus one plus zero until the end of turn. Yeah, I can't. I literally cannot count how many times I've been killed by Rhinoceros. This card is very good. And very deadly, especially late game, because you can literally just keep playing spells until it becomes like a 6 1 or something, and then you win. Elf Girl Liza. Uh, I like her personally because, and it's been run, it has been run a bit just because of its fanfare ability. All allied followers can be damaged by spells and effects until the end of the opponent's next turn. So, any decks that rely on spells to do damage, like Bloodcraft and, um, what's the other? Car. What's the other one I'm thinking of? Runecraft. Yeah, it really, really like stops those. It stops those decks like hard in their tracks because th they rely heavily on spells to do damage. Prairie Dragon. Um, I just wanted to mention it because I have it and it's a legendary. Oh, and if you guys don't know, and the like, how good a card is is dependent on its rarity. Like you know. I can just I can show right here. Bronze, silver, gold, and legendary. Um 
Although some can argue that some silver cards can be gold and some bronze cards can be silver, but we won't go into that. Um, basically, Fairy Dragon. Oops. Oh my gosh. I I'm not used to um doing this on the computer. I'm used to doing this on my phone, which is a lot easier. This is really obnoxious. TBH. <laughs> Um, so it's a true drop with Ward, uh, which I guess is why it's good, because it only costs two. Um, add zero to his follower's, atta follower's attack. This value equals the number of allied fairies that have been destroyed during this match. It would be good, but it only has a toughness of four. And, I don't know, maybe turn three. It's a good card to have if, if three fairies are already dead. But late game, I can't see it doing much. So, yeah. Let's see. Sylvan Justice. It's a normal damage spell card that you use... The main one that you use to... And it helps you add a fairy to your hand. Pretty much every forest craft deck runs it. Elf Twins Assault. A.K.A. I'm triggered. Um, deal X damage to two random enemy followers. X deals the number of neutral cards in your hand. Um, did we bypass that one spell for neutral craft? Right, I'm, I'm sorry. I definitely should mention this. Into the looking glass. Draw a card. Change all cards in your hand and play that cost seven play points or less into neutral cards. Uh, that's broken because there's so many cards <laughs> that, you know, can abuse that. Uh, what was the card? Yeah, Elf Twins Assault being one of them. It's And it only costs two, which is insane. Like, you can just, ugh. It's a great card. If you have it and you use it against me, I will hate you. <laughs> um, Gourmet Emperor Kaiza. Three... Get, get up there, please. <laughs> it's a 3 2, two. Uh, With fanfare, put an ultimate carrot in your hand. Ultimate carrot is a 2... It's a 2 that... It's a 2... 2 that costs 2 play points. And the last words is when it dies, you add another one to your hand. Very good card all around. It's you run in most decks for obvious reasons. Uh, Grimmier or Cyclone... It has Ward and Enhance, which means if you play for 10 play point orbs, deal 1 damage to all enemy followers 4 times. Very good for clearing the field. Before they nerfed it, it used to do 4 damage to all enemies. So you can. So this card was allowed you to be defensive and offensive at the same time, which I thought in my mind was freaking crazy. Um, Let's see. Rapunzel? I only. I'll mention her in Swordcraft, because she's not really used. Because she's only used in Swordcraft. Uh, da -da. Ancient Elf. Ward. Return all other followers to your hands. Gain plus one, plus one for each follower returned. Amazing card. You can pair it with so many spells. You literally, like, like this, this deck tour... Endgame is just so deadly because you can just keep spamming all these low, low costing spells. And for example, you can keep playing Fairy, 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 Boom, Rhinoceros, Rhinoceros, excuse me, hit them for five, Boom, Ancient Elf, return it back to your hand. And then you can rinse and repeat till you win. Really broken, like, combos. The only thing that I don't like about this is that it can just easily be killed with the. Uh, which will cause it with the uh, with the kill spell. So it's really, really good. It's not the best of legendaries, but it's really, really good just for this deck. Magical Fairy Lilac. Another card that's been being used in this meta for a good reason. Uh, clash. Destroy the enemy follower and remove this follower's abil clash ability. Um, clash is the. It's abilities that activate before damage is dealt, whenever attacking or defending against the enemy follower. It's not activate when attacking leaders. So yeah, essentially you evolve it, kill a spend yeah, spend one evolution point, kill a creature, have a 3-6 on the field. 
pretty decent in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm just highlighting like the really like the standout card just so this card, this um, sorry, this card, this uh, video doesn't go like for 20 years. Um, Erd, good neutral card. Destroy a follower and then return it to play. Uh, pairs off really well with any storm creature because if you destroy it and return it to play, it can attack again. So that's really, 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 really busted. It's also good for defensive because imagine if you have a huge giant like evolved threat that's been buffed up by like I don't know, by like spells or some of the abilities, it's like plus five, plus five for whatever reason. You can kill it and then return it, and then it'll be in its weakened, well, it's a normal state, which is considerably weaker. Great card to have. Everyone should have one. I love Erd. Um, Uriel. It's good if you have an amulet you want to fish out, uh, which a lot of decks run, a lot of decks run plenty of amulets. Uh, especially in Havencraft. Ha, <laughs> especially in Havencraft. Um, Goblin Breaker Tina. When it evolves, deal 2 damage to an enemy follower. Or deal 5 if it's a neutral follower. And seeing how this meta is all around neutral creatures. Yeah, that's pretty important. And why do you think it's around neutral... Um, neutral creatures. Excuse me, neutral followers. And all because of this woman right here. Alice, Wonderland Explorer. Fanfare, give plus one plus one to all other allied neutral followers in your hand and in play. One thing that's really fucking cool about this um, game is that it's programmed that there are abilities that affect the cards in your hand. Like, you can, your cards from your hand will get a plus one plus one bonus. I think that's super, super dope. Really like it. Um... Obviously, I, this is the main reason why everyone's running neutral cards. Just for that reason. Um, let's see. Ephemera, Angelic Slacker. Whenever another allied follower attacks, give that follower plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. Um, basically, it's only used in, like, uh, Swordcraft, I believe. But, and maybe Shadowcraft. But yeah, it's a pretty, pretty sick ability. Really good, I like it. Um, let's see. Path to Purgatory, I think I should just mention real quickly. That's because fairies are 1 1 creatures and they die a lot. And when they die, they leave something called a shadow. And just like this card says, at the end of your turn, deal 6 damage to all enemies if you have at least 30 shadows. So it's a very gimmicky set for a deck in Forest Craft, but it's usually, it would be stack all your fairies, stack all your creatures. Play Path the Purgatory and then hope you win. Like, and usually you will at that point. Um, Flower Princess is being used a lot. Put two fairies in your hand if you have two or less neutral cards in your hand. Put a Thorn Burst and two fairies if you have three neutral cards. Really good card. Really good card. Um, let's see. Anything else worth mentioning? No. Uh, no, White Cat Sage. Draw a card and then give plus one plus one to another allied follower. It doesn't even have to be neutral. It's a. I don't use this card because, as you can see, I don't have any copies, but Silver Oni swears by this card and loves this card so much. And, you know, I think I, I'd believe him. It looks like a. It does a lot. It does a lot. It's a little bit weaker than I'd like it to be because it's a 3 4 and costs 5, but. But for all that. Um. For all that versatility that it has, it's okay. I think it's it, it's good. Hector, deal three damage to an enemy if you have at least three neutral cards in your hand. Great card. Ping something for three. It's a four four with ward. So it's it's that offense yet defense capability that I love about it. Let me just add you here. Dance of death. Destroy an enemy follower. Deal two damage to an enemy leader. Everyone pretty much runs this card, like, just because of that ability, uh, to do two damage. Especially in, like, a burn deck or an, like, an aggro deck. Although I don't know why people run this in an aggro deck, only because it just costs so much. 
costs two. I mean, sorry, costs two. It costs five. So to me, that's just, like a lot. Uh, execution. I just honorable mention. Destroy an enemy follower amulet. It's good for for more control decks because it can destroy as it destroys amulet. And amulet destruction is not common in this game in general. Uh, another honorable mention, call it Cocutus. If you pay 8, you get to put a Servant of Darkness into your hand. A Servant of Darkness is a 13-13 creature that costs 5. Yeah, let that sit for you for a while. Very scary. If you cannot kill it, you pretty much get almost guaranteed to lose next turn. Um, none of these cards are really being used. Crystal Tia should be mentioned um you get summon a crystallia eve and you give it ward and evolve it if two other cards were played this turn so you get a six six with ward essentially and then this creature and then it also has ward so it's a very good defensive yet offensive card because it can also attack the turn like your crystal eve can also attack the turn it was summoned um jungle warden ward which is always good, and then summon 10, summon 10, enhance 10, summon a jung another jungle warden, and then give them both storm. So you can essentially end a match this way, literally just attack something for 8 if they don't have, if your opponent doesn't have ward. Very good card, I love it, I think it's kind of underrated, you know, in my opinion. Uh, well, the forest, deal one damage to random enemy power decks times, x equals the number of cards in your hand. I've seen this card used enough to mention it. Uh, let's see. Uh, fairy princess. Put fairies into your hand until it is full. Um, that plus... Plus, I don't know, this spells trouble. So, yeah. <laughs> that can easily spell trouble for your opponent if you somehow get that off. Um, let's see. Mm, Crystallia Aaron definitely add this to mentionables because it has ward. It's 4 6 at ward. Gives you. 3 defense, and if you pay 8, you get 1 evolution point, which means you can just use it to evolve it right away into a 6-8. So, essentially it pays for itself. Great card. I always run it if I'm using a Forest Craft deck, which I'm not, because I just don't have enough cards to use it. But, let's talk about the man and the woman of the hour, beauty and the fucking beast. Game plus 2 plus 2 if you have at least 5 cards in your hand. Then... Gain resistance to damage and destruction from spells. Yeah, gain damage to da gain resistance. Sorry, <laughs> to damage and destruction from spells and effects if you have at least three neutral cards in your hand. If you play this card, it's a it's a seven eight, and then if you evolve it, it's a nine ten, and at that point you win. You literally just win. There's so literally there's so few answers to this. To this card really and truly if you get off both abilities like the plus two plus two and resistance from spells and effects then essentially you just kind of win at that point not many answers for this card super great if you have it god bless your soul saquio is a neutral craft card neutral craft god damn it silver Oni keeps calling it neutral craft and it's not a class it's just neutral <laughs> anyways it's a neutral card uh, fanfare put a neutral follower from your hand into play give it rush and return it to your hand at the end of your turn so if you have a big big bad card like I don't know I basically all the other cards I'm gonna be covering later on in this video <laughs> then you can just put in your hand you know, swing with it, and then it comes back. Trust me when I tell you, with certain cards, it's it's a really broken ability. I, I might mention it later when I get to those cards, which I feel like I will very, very soon. Elf Queen. Restore X defense in, to your leader. X equals number of shadows you have. Then change 
your number of traps to zero. This card is fucking fantastic. Excuse me. It is right on the cur it is almost on the curve. Instead of a 7-7, seven, seven, it's a 6-6. Six, six. But given its ability, it's super worth it because all those cards that are like aggro and whatnot, this card stops them dead in their tracks. If they were so close to killing you, the you know, assuming that you just had a bunch of fairies die this entire game, which is almost always happens. Um, yeah, like, I've seen people play this card and go from 4 back to 20. Thank god, I guess we should be lucky that you can't go past 20 in this game. But yeah, great card. I love it. Yeah. I wish I had a copy, or else I would run it all the time. It, it's just screwed me over so many times. It's a really good card. Uh, alright. Legendary... Legendary neutral card. Um, Lucifer. At the end of your turn, restore, restore 4 defense to your leader. And if you evolve it, deal 4 damage to an enemy leader. Remember how I said I was going to mention some cards that pair with Sahakuel? Yeah, Lucifer is one of them. Because when you, um... When you... When you attack with it, with Sahakuel's ability, you still gain the 4 life before it goes back to your hand. So that's really, really busted. It's a good combination. Um, no one really runs Odin any much, much anymore. Because it's probably because it's a 4-3, which is so weak, but it does banish an enemy follower or amulet. But it's so weak, and it costs 8, which is probably why no one uses it anymore. I just thought I would mention it, because it was used a lot at one point. Um, huh, all these cards that I do not have. Uh, Rose Queen, I'll mention very briefly. Transform each fairy in your hand in the spell, into the spell Thorn Burst. Um, to me, I just think this card is kind of hard to get off. Just because, like, you can't keep hoarding your fairies all the time. And you can't hoard it enough to justify playing an 8 by 5 Like, you know, endgame, you need this. This doesn't really offer you much, uh... Doesn't offer you much, uh... Momentum, because it's just a 5-5, and at the, end, at the late game, that's not that impressive, so I'm not a huge fan of it. This, on the other hand, I feel differently about. Even though it's a 4-4 and it costs 8, however, its last words, it does gain rush, which means you can attack that turn, which is good. And then, last words, randomly put one of the highest cost Forest Craft cards from your deck into your hand at the start of your next turn change its cost to zero. Very good card. It used to be run a lot. I guess it's not run anymore because Beauty and the Beast is a thing. But it's a good card. Um, Dark Angel Olivia. Increase your evolution points to three. I mean, it, it's... It, need I say more? It's a great card. <laughs> you get your evolution points back. And you can use it right away to be offensive. Great card. I wish I had one. Ezra Phil, restore another great card. Restore four defense to your leader. Whenever this follower attacks, deal two damage to all enemies. So that that also includes the your opponent as well. So remember, once again, Sahakuya. <laughs> it's this, this card is a this card is a great card to pair it with. Great card, great 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 card to pair it with. Probably, arguably, the best card to pair with Sahakuyo. Next, Silverbolt. I hate this card. I hate this card. Draw a card and deal X damage to an enemy. X equals the number of cards in your hand. Essentially, keep all the cards in yourself, to yourself. Then, turn 9, you play this card, you draw a card, you deal 9 damage to your opponent, they die. Very good finishing card. Because you can do X damage to an enemy, which means your opponent. So you can do 9 damage to your opponent's face. And I have died so many times to this card. It's a good card. Use it if you have it. Uh, replace your deck with an Apocalypse deck. 
Apocalypse deck is full of a bunch of mean, stupid space cards that are really strong and will almost guarantee you the you, the victory. Almost guarantee you the victory. I have beaten Apocalypse decks before. It's just it's just quite the challenge. Uh, and then next we have Bahamut. Um, fanfare. Destroy all other followers and amulets. Can attack the enemy leader if two or more enemy followers are in play. Uh, yeah. Besides that, can attacking the enemy leader part. It's just a board wipe. It's a board wipe and then a big scary fucking creature. Very good card. If you have one, oh. I don't see a reason to not use it in, like, at least half your decks. It's just a really good card to have, in my opinion. Uh, and then, last but not least... Yeah, we're not talking about... We're not talking about you. You suck. <laughs> um, we have Queen of the Dread Sea. Change a card of a neutral card, excluding Queen of the Dread Sea, and a non-neutral card in your hand to zero. Then discard all of the cards in your hand. If it wasn't for that last part, discarding the other cards in your hand, I would say this card is amazing, god mode, run it all the time. But, you essentially gives you only two free cards to play, and then, like, that's it. Like, after that, you better win the game, like, like, you better waste, you better use that on, like, something very special, or else, like, that's it, you're pretty done. Which is why only Queen of the Dread Sea is used in, uh... In uh, Dragoncraft, mostly. Because it's too much of a risk to use otherwise. So, and it's also just a 7-7 by itself. And when it costs 10, that's not super impressive. Because, like most cards, it can just be killed the following turn. Um, and yeah, and all in all, it's just overshadowed by this person. Which is arguably the best card in this meta just for its ability like the only thing that would make it better i guess if it was like a 4-4 but yeah that's it for today i just want to go over um forest craft and neutral craft the other videos will be definitely be long uh, sorry longer they'll definitely be shorter i just have to make this video a little bit longer just so i can go over like the big players for forest craft and neutral craft but yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, um, by all means, like, comment, and subscribe. And next week, we will be back. And next week. We're not doing this next week. I'm... <laughs> I don't know why I said next week. But yeah, we're going to be back with um, the next class. And but yeah, like I said, if you liked it, like, comment, subscribe. Until then, y'all, it's, it's been a pleasure. This is Ruby Doo. And I'm out this biatch. Bye.